All right, all right, all right. I think it's that time, Breaky. Hey, ladies. <laughs> Y'all ready to dance? All Y'all right, want to know right, what? Right, right. That reminded me of Space Jam for some reason. It's a great song. Anyways, yeah, I am ready. ESL Major Series, Space. man. Frey versus TDM. <laughs> I know, right? It's so random. But I'm pretty sure that, that quote is from Dazed and Confused. No, I, I don't know. Opposite. No, I know. I at, For some reason, I just had the thought of Space Jam. <laughs> theme song for Space Jam right there. It's pretty <laughs> random, I know. All right, we'll play that um, as, uh, yeah. as in, in between music uh, next time here. Yeah. But I, I think we're ready. This game is underway here. Um, let's do it. You ready? We're going to get official? You want you want to do the introduction here? We haven't had an all right since uh, we started casting the past few days. So um, I feel like our first cast on Honcast for a little while, I feel like I that's guess. the way to go. I guess we can do it. Let's do it. All right, I'm ready when you are, pal. All right, welcome to the songcast.com presentation on Breaking CPK. Going to be shoutcasting. Also, joining me is Ziori here of Honcast, as well as my co caster. And this is the ESL Major Series number 10. We got the grand finals coming at you. European. Well, why did I say that? It's a 5,000 euro prize pool that is on the line. We have Frenetic Array taking on trademark esports here yes you heard me right the ears do not deceive you we have a hell of a matchup tonight if you are tuning in here on this friday night you're tuning in for very good reason i wouldn't rather be any other place than here in the studio casting some here's a new earth because two really good teams going at it gonna be a blast like i said though zero buddy you're joining me how you doing i am doing very well i'm nice and primed lubricated warmed up ready to rock and roll with han of course we just got finished casting the finals of the fanatic uh, red call play Han open number two. So I'm ready to go. Of course, we just got to see a best of three series between Frey and Black Fade. So uh, we've already seen a little bit of Frey today. I'm excited to see a bit more. Uh, this is a little bit of a rematch. You know, we did get to see these guys face off in the semifinals of that Fnatic TV tournament and uh, yeah. or Fnatic Raid Call tournament. Pardon me. So uh, Frey did win that series 2-0 over TDM, a fairly decisive victory. So should be an interesting series, uh, as uh, we've said a few times here. Pride on the line. I'm sure TDM is going to want a little bit of vengeance. Yeah, it, exactly right. Glad you brought that up because very, very important. Obviously, afraid defeating TDM two games and nothing in that Fnatic play tournament, and uh, you know it was wasn't a wasn't fairly fairly dominating fashion in Frey's part. You know, maybe even surprised both of us a little bit uh, when, when we saw that series. So, mm -hmm. um, looking forward to seeing how TDM kind of responds to that. Obviously, both teams running their uh, running their A roster, you could say. Uh, especially with Fnatic Ray, they're actually running with Riser. We just saw Bobo playing for them in the Fnatic tournament, but they did sub in Riser, who they consider to be their A roster. Unfortunately, not going to dream hack with it, of course, but um, because of that rule over there. But Riser, very good player, and they're bringing in the big guns, you could say, to take on TDM. So, again, I'm expecting a hell of a series here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me too. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the bands here as uh, the picks are now underway. We do have. Magebane, Bubbles, Ophelia, Tempest, Parasite, Demented Shaman, and Armdon. So a surprisingly low str a low amount of strength heroes banned here in this game. That seems to be the trend these days, but I actually seeing Bubbles banned is uh, jumping out of me. Glacius is also going to be banned as well. I might have missed him. Um, what are you thinking, Breaky? I mean, wow. Hmm. Yeah, you know, there's definitely some noteworthy, as you mentioned, uh, left open, and especially being that Tundra. But I think the, the biggest reason why Tundra was left open was because Frey, you know, they had the first pick, and it was a case of if TDM was going to allow them to first pick it, they would. Obviously, if TDM got the opportunity to pick Tundra as well, very likely would have done it in their first two. So, But in case also of them getting Tundra, they did obviously give up Pebbles especially, who's, by the way, B could play on the alternate Pebbles, uh, the... Uh, <laughs> Well, J Giant Pebbles, aka the Hulk, but aka um, Edward Norton. <laughs> exactly. Uh, looks pretty badass. I'm looking forward to seeing that this game. Uh, and then Wretched Egg on top of that. So TDM starting aggressive. Valkyrie Andromeda here to follow up for Frey. So we're seeing that Andromeda hero pop up a lot more lately. Definitely. I mean, we even got to see Andromeda banned in, I think it was the first game of that last series between Frey and uh, Blackfade. Third game, actually. Third, game. third game. Okay. Well, yeah. pardon me. Um, but yeah, so Andromeda definitely uh, becoming a little bit more popular, at least. Seeing her band is uh, a step up in popularity. And this will be the first time we've seen Tundra in a little while, as he was banned all three games in that last series, which, um, you know, maybe a little bit of preference with Black Fade, but uh, still interesting. Yeah. Uh, my question will be, is Silhouette going to get picked up? You know, as we've mentioned a few times, Moon Meander has been the one uh, really a proponent of uh, Silhouette as far as you know having that epiphany and playing Silhouette quite a bit. 
So will they mix her in here? Of course, she is not banned. Mage Bane, the only agility hero that uh, has been banned. So it should be interesting. We do see a Luna picked up by Cinder here, and Z-Freak does have that Keeper of the Forest right-clicked. Again, just to reiterate from earlier, there has been a slight nerf on Keeper of the Forest. Uh, those little tree babies do now attack uh, about 25% slower. For one second swing yeah. timer, now uh, up to 1.25 seconds. So a small change to note that uh, may affect Z-Freak's play a little. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up the old silhouette discussion too because I was actually looking back to confirm but but yeah, they actually picked up silhouette in the first game in the series yesterday against Frey. Um, again, it didn't work out as well as it's been working out for Moon Meander uh, with the way Frey played against them. So, maybe that's also something that have that you have to we have to keep in mind and perhaps why we won't see TDM pick it up because it didn't work the, uh, yesterday, but you never know. Maybe they'll go with it again thinking that maybe that was a fluke and mm -hmm. uh, they can make it work this time around, but yeah, good point also on the keep of the force with his nerve. So, we'll see how Frey follows it up here with their final two picks. Definitely a lot of powerful options, of course, still remaining on the board, um, including Torturer for that matter. He's, he's definitely still there. I know a uh, Polywog Priest hero that they like. Uh, Magnus, obviously a very optional pickup here uh, for both these yeah. teams, really, so... Definitely some options still on the board. We'll see. Uh, we'll wow. see if the Legion team goes. Yeah, I would be a little bit surprised if they didn't grab Magnus here. Seeing him on the board when mm. they already have a Valkyrie is very appealing. There it is. Magnus going to be picked up, and Frey actually going to be the ones to pick up Silhouette here. And unless my memory is deceiving me, I can't recall too many times we've seen Frey work in Silhouette recently. At least not quite at the frequency uh, as some of these other teams, uh, most notably Black Fade and TDM. So yeah. he'll be played by Slicks, and I am certainly looking forward to that. Yeah, they tend to be more of a Valkyrie or Forsaken Archer type hero picks uh, for them. But again, Silhouette, and it's not like it's uh, crazy by any means. It's like you said, that there are so many other teams that play here. And she she is a very aggressive range carry. So and so it definitely fits Freystyle as well. So yeah, case of, you know, we're not even going to give them that opportunity to go with the final pick Silhouettes and stuff. We're going to take it ourselves. And of course, Slick's going to be the one to play it. So... As I stressed before as well, you know, Silhouette and Valkyrie, you can imagine if, uh, well, of course, I'm sure one of them at the very least will look to get a Shield Breaker on top of the Aurora from Andromeda. Mm -hmm. you got a ton of physical damage coming out from uh, yep. Silhouette and Valkyrie. So that's something that uh, TDM is going to have to look out for. Obviously, having that Keeper of the Forest, very good news for them when it comes to armor. They had a, ch a chance to pick up Plague Rider with their final pick, too, but uh, they do actually finish off with Electrician, so instead going with more of a beefy hero presence. Um, to be able to kind of match up to that damage, I guess you could say. But yeah, how about that finish there? I mean, TDM, they got the Pebbles pick up. I wonder, I guess it is going to be that Aluna Pebbles lane. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You see either Glacius Pebbles or Nymphora Pebbles even, but they're going to go with the Aluna Pebbles here. Yeah, definitely right. And that was actually going to be the, my next thought here. As uh, Of course, Glacius is banned, but Nymphora was open, so they did opt for Aluna. And uh, we'll see how that works out. I mean, another powerful lane is quite a bit of burst damage to that power throw as well as Aluna's stun can help set up the Pebbles combo early on. Uh, it's just that uh, time-old issue of Pebbles running out of mana that they're going to have to deal with. So we'll see how that uh, works out for them. In the end, of course, uh, the inevitable pause here as we get into game number one. But this will give me some time to check out old Edward Norton here. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I uh, see. Uh, exactly. He really I mean. does look kind of like the Hulk. I'm going to be honest. Well, I can't wait for him to get bigger, too, because obviously with his ultimate, he does uh, grow. So oh, yeah. it's going to be cool when he uh, gets bigger and we can see more and pretty epic. So He does. He looks really angry and he's green. I mean, there had to be some, some Hulk uh, influence <laughs> into this. I mean, the Avengers just did come out. Exactly. I mean, he's even his face. Look, like, oh, oh, smart. Right, well, did very well, by the way. Have you seen the Avengers? I'm not. I am not. Oh, you're missing out. God, you don't see any movies, do you? Well, I've see. I I've seen a a, a whole bunch, but I no. I I'm, I've missed a couple <laughs> classics. But but none of the ones that I've listed <laughs> off over the last. I've seen every month. movie that Breaky CPK has. <laughs> no, I I haven't seen any movies that Breaky CPK. I guess likes. I have. Yeah. I guess so. Um, anyways, it was a very good movie, and it was also interesting. It, did you hear it? It broke the box office record for the amount of money it made in in the box out in its uh, release weekend. It was over two hundred million, That's which is more thirty million Titanic. more, thirty million more than the next closest, which was actually Harry Potter, the most recent Harry Potter movie. Wow, uh, way more than Titanic. So yeah, it's, Titanic it was up there at one point. Breaky, don't don't talk smack about Titanic. Titanic's up there, of course, but oh, yeah. uh, release weekend, yeah. That it did is, very well. That so. is sick. That's what's well, a good movie. What's a good movie? I, I definitely see it, it now. I mean, jeez. <laughs>
But yeah, you know, so obviously he's a. Uh, you know, if this Han thing doesn't work out, you could have a career in Movie Phone. You got the voice for it, man. Can you imagine if you called Movie Phone and it's Breaky CPK? <laughs> the Avengers coming out at three o'clock. <laughs> you could do it, man. Yeah, I yeah, I, that'll be my back if That's I got this. That's his backup plan. All right, Hopefully, podcast works out. It continues. Working. <laughs> I, I guess it's always the back option. Very, very good. So anyway, Frey going to be running that deadly Valkyrie Magmus lane up here in the top. Looks like uh, they will be facing off against uh, the Aluna Pebbles lane. It was going to be Wretched Hag, but we're already going to see TDM do uh, a little bit of a rotation here. So a Hag is going to go to the mid, and it's going to be a 1v1 in the mid lane, a solo Hag versus a solo Tundra, Moon Meander versus Riser. So this should be an interesting matchup, of course, uh, especially since Moon Meander plays Tundra so well, going up against one should certainly uh, be in his favor, at least I would assume, but should definitely be an interesting mid matchup. Regardless, of course, Keeper of the Forest in the jungle, and then down here in the bottom, it is going to be Solo Electrician versus the deadly Andromeda Silhouette lane. So, man, look at Frey's lane combos, though. I mean, both of them just really, really scary. Yeah, you got your uh, one of the more powerful lanes in the game, you could argue, and that Magmus, uh, the Magmus Valkyrie on top of that, you know, this is definitely... More of an old school Frey lineup as well. Really, when again going around that DreamHack event, they love to run this combination: the WTF uh, Valkyrie, the Leon Black Magmas. So they're they're bringing that back here uh, for this matchup, as you mentioned, against the Pebbles Aluna up top here. Um, and no doubt, if they catch uh, one of those two heroes out of position, they will go in for a kill. In the meantime, in the middle lane, Tundra was actually charging in right there on a Wretched Hag. And applying a bit of pressure, Wretched Hag is still level 1 at this point, actually. He's going to finally hit level 2 right there as the creep wave gets pulled back a little bit. But Tundra seems like he's managing at least a fair time here in this middle lane so far against Mumi and his Wretched Hag. Of course, Riser, a great player in his own right. Mm -hmm. So I can't say at the same time, I'm too surprised at that. A silhouette will be having the free farm of this game. For Frenetic Ray, again, being played by Slicks. So it's something we keep stressing about Moon Meander doing so much recently. How, but how much of an impact will Slicks be able to have as a result of this free farm silhouette early on? Yeah. Uh, you know, it could be scary for TDM if they let it get too out of hand. Yeah, definitely. And that's one of the things about these lane setups where, you know, generally speaking, having that jungler is great. But in this situation, Frey really capitalizing with Silhouette getting uh, pretty much free farm. There's really nothing Troplandor can do about it down here up against the double ranged... Uh, really working nicely. We mentioned uh, a little bit earlier today, Andromeda really not the best babysitter because of that limited range that she has, only about uh, 450 or 400. Wow. Um, uh, it's not much Trouf can do about it. Or, uh, pardon me, Andromeda going to end up uh, being a pretty solid babysitter here in this situation. So uh, hopefully Z Freak uh, can do some work here with this Keeper of the Forest. And, you know, as we noted uh, with that small change to the Tree Dogs, I'll be curious to see if that timing changes. You know, is he going to be able to get that seven, eight minute tower that Keeper tends to do, or is that going to be slightly delayed? Um, you know, it's one of these things where we could see it being really a negligible effect, or because that DPS is lower on his farming in general, uh, could have kind of that reverse snowball a little bit where Keeper yeah. just can't take off like he used to. Yeah, and that's uh, you know something we're gonna be able to see as time goes on. Obviously, uh, some of the other series, I think even a couple times, seeing him here in this first game. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, keep an eye on that. Of course, Z Freak. Yeah, no one has one of the best junglers in the world. If he can't make it happen, then no one can. So, mm -hmm. we'll keep an eye on the keeper the first, and see how he continues to do. But again, I look back at the silhouette. Continuing to have free farm, obviously, and Tromeda doing everything that she can as well, being played by Otaliba, uh to constantly pressure this electrician. But Trophimador, you know, not necessarily in the worst spot of the world. He's managing some okay levels. You see him taking a bit of pressure right there, but um, even putting a little bit back onto Andromeda and falling back and activating the health potion. So, uh, but playing is somewhat, uh, somewhat aggressive, and I guess with this award site blocking the, the creep camp pull for our Legion team, it is uh, allowing Trophimador to get a decent position at least. Uh, to be able to leech some experience for the time being. So again, at least he's keeping up on levels. Again, tie with level 4. Not too bad news for him. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, look at that charge from Tundra on Wretched Egg. Wretched Egg turns around, the Sonos Scream going to hit. Not enough for that kill, but again, a lot of return damage coming out there. So both Riser and Moon Meander really going out of here in the middle lane, but it seems like Moon Meander has slight advantage, and he may get a kill right here. There he blinks in. Not enough mana for the Sonos Scream. There you go, enough. Oh, what the health potion keeps Tundra alive. Wow. A second longer. Can Riser actually make the uh -huh. getaway? It looks like he can. What a getaway from Riser right here. Blink is coming up in two seconds. Oh, no, Riser. No, he's going to end up dying. Bloodlust kill will come out for Moon Meander right there. He made such a great escape throughout all that and to die because he was running back in the lane exposed, unfortunate for him. 
Yeah, very unfortunate indeed. It really was a great juke. Unfortunately, Moon took that wrong turn, but in the end, uh, Wretched Hag just a little bit too mobile. Um, if you wouldn't mind, Mr. Breaky CPK, I'm going to reset the Skype call real quick. Uh, you're getting a little robotic yeah, yeah. on me. Alrighty here, let's bring him on back. Right. Oh, hello, hello. You're sounding pretty good. It's just every so often you would just sort of kind of trail off a little bit. So hopefully that helps just a bit. Uh, but yeah, exactly. So now TDM with a nice little lead. Moon Meander in uh, pretty good shape here in the mid lane. Uh, and let's uh, take a look at GPM. Of course, uh, he's breached that 300 GPM mark. And it looks like Z-Freak's still doing pretty well in the jungle as well. I know he's picked up a couple of runes, at least one double damage. But 280 GPM for Keeper in the jungle is uh, actually pretty damn good. So... Doesn't seem that this uh, tree dog nerf is really slowing him down a hell of a lot. Yeah, he uh, he is definitely is uh, doing a, doing a fantastic job. And like I said, you know, Steve Free can't do it, nobody can. But it seems like he's just managing just fine. And, ooh, electrician at the bottom lane. A lot of damage once again coming out, but not enough for the kill. He's able to barely stay alive, and you know, as long as he stays alive, even as close as that was, he's accomplishing his job. So Trafalgar is doing a good job at that, being a level five. You look at the farm, though, and obviously not really getting too much. He only has those creep kills and a very low GPM at 112 as a result. But again, it's that situation. You really can't expect much more to happen from him. So I really think for for the situation, Trophimador is doing a fantastic job. But uh, we'll see how much of an impact that does have throughout this game, you know, uh, with him being so underfarmed as a result of that. But keep the force up here and... Right on cue, it seems like. He pops the invis. He's running in level six. Can he get him to the Valkyrie? Oh, that was a chance. Nice stun from Aluna right there. Oh, but the tell the root is just a half a second too late. Magnus will stun in. He has a steam bath. He may not even need it. They're going to turn around on a pebbles. Unbelievable. And Magnus will survive after using that mana battery. Ay, 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 that could not have gone any worse for TDM right there. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, they do throw down that Ward of Rev, but wow. I mean, that leap from Valkyrie came just at the last second. If only, uh, uh, who's this, B Kid on Pebbles. I was going to say Moon, but uh, definitely not uh, Not correct me. If only Pebbles could have gotten that stun off, it would have been a pretty easy kill on a Magnus. They were trying to stagger the stuns, but it just wasn't enough. So very unfortunate there. And uh, that will give Fred a little bit of an edge up in that top lane. Down here in the bottom, Electrician taking a good bit of damage. Silhouette is going to be able to get that kill, so Slicks is going to dive the tower. Nice use of the Illusions, and he is going to get away with 11 hit points to spare. So Jeez. an extremely close call for Slicks, but he makes it out alive. So very, very well played. Unfortunately, Trophlandor is going to have to pay the ultimate price. And uh, this game definitely starting to heat up a little bit here, Breaky. Yeah, that what was pretty epic at the bottom lane. I thought when he... Uh... When he did the district with the ultimate, I thought the tower would have actually gone for the illusion, but still went for him, but he was barely able to survive. Meanwhile, in the middle of the Wretched Hag, and locked down. There's the avalanche. He's on top of the comma stun, and Wretched Hag was not getting away from that. So, great collapse coming out here from the Legion team as Witaliba there on Andromeda. Actually, he helps, uh, of course, set up the kill. So, again, very well played on his part. And it looks just like that. We're going to have a 3 to 1 hero kill advantage in favor of our, uh, in favor of our Legion team right now. Frey. Uh, looking pretty good in that sense as a uh, riser, especially after that kill. He's 240 gold per minute now, and uh, not too shabby. Eight minutes into the game here. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely right. Things uh, still looking uh, pretty good. I mean, Frey is a small lead, but uh, not too much. I mean, you know, given it's three to one, their lead isn't that huge again because of that jungler Z Freak is definitely doing well. And it's sort of a shame that that first gank didn't go so well because I think. Uh, had they just lined it up a little bit more properly, it would have been you know, uh, a pretty straightforward kind of, uh, oh, it's about that keeper timing that we're used to that we were talking about. We're going to see some lane rotations here. Down in the bottom lane, it is Hag on Silhouette. The Bat Blast is going to be used, and Silhouette is going to oh. fall. Well played by Moon Meander to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Slicks, and he is going to come out on top uh, in the mid. It is going to be Electrician versus Tundra now. So apparently the lane, lane swap here for TDM working very nicely is now Moon Meander uh, sitting 2-1. Yeah, that was uh, that was a moment. Both of those went, both of those players went into that battle knowing somebody was going to die right there. But I don't think either one really was 100% certain who it was going to be. But right there, Moon Inner does barely squeak out on top. One more auto attack from Silhouette very likely would have gotten the kill as well. But Tundra in the meantime in the middle end, he's getting collapsed on. We'll put out the avalanche as well. Not enough for the kill though. He tried. Oh, but then comes the Aurora from Andromeda to snipe him down the level three Aurora, doing just enough damage. You don't usually see that ability for damage purposes, but hey, yeah, might as well take what you can get, I guess. With all about, we'll get credit for the kill right there. So it at least makes it a one for one. Yep. That's a good job by Tundra in the end. I mean, he used everything, but hey, he ended up getting a kill out of it. 
as well for his team. So at least he got some revenge there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely right. Like you said, it's pretty rare to see Aurora use to snipe those kills, but uh, well played by Tundra to kind of stand his ground there and drop that avalanche, knowing he was probably going to go down anyway, uh, given the slow from Etched Hag. Stand his ground, drop everything, and like you said, ultimately turn it into a one-for-one, one, so it's not a, a complete loss. Um, still getting uh, just small lag issues. I don't know if they're on your end or my end, but... I think it's on our end. Yeah. So. Okay. So it's not terrible, but it's like you know, I don't know. It's it's not total robot, but every so often you're kind of you trail off into robot land and then come back. So I don't know. I don't know. If, you might want to close BitTorrent, Breaky. I don't know if you tried that. Already. I. You know what? I probably should, huh? But, I probably uh, should stop downloading those. Uh, <laughs> are you, are those you torrenting movies. the Avengers? Is that what you're doing? You, you <laughs> snaky bastard. It's just that good. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, actually close so, here, so anyhow, that helps. though. Uh, yeah, that uh, lead for Frey that we were just talking about, definitely a little tiny shift in momentum here. TDM starting to uh, pull things up, sitting uh, with a nice 2K experience lead, only 10 minutes in, so definitely not so bad. Uh, not so bad at all. Moonmander definitely looking pretty good on this. Let's take a look at the GPM chart to see where everyone's at. And uh, Hag leading the way, kind of uh, blow for blow here with um, Slicks on that silhouette. So both of them right above that 300 GPM mark. Uh, neither of them taking off quite yet, but one of the things to keep in mind that you noted, uh, well, you can hold that thought here as we see Electrician engaged on the bottom, a nice swap from Otaliba, and uh, oh, they're going to turn this around onto Silhouette, the Bat Blast going to come out, and Silhouette is going to be in big trouble, Electrician going to chase her down, and she is indeed going to fall, and all the while Silhouette, or pardon me, WTF did fall on the top lane, Sender managed to pick up a kill up there, so uh, TDM picking up two kills in opposite corners of the map, but arguably on those most valuable heroes, both agility heroes going to fall. Interestingly enough, as I was about to note, uh, two carries for the Legion team, it really only takes one to take off. Uh, yeah. to really take this game into the late stages. Very much so correct, and uh, you know what, the fact that Silhouette is up to 286, but obviously getting the kill right there, so slowing her down a little bit. Um, in the meantime, Wretched Hag going to push this final lane with Keeper of the Force as the tree dogs come out, so uh, trademark Esports definitely applying a bit of pressure here and coming up to that 12-minute mark. And for Frenetic Array, they're making their way over and Dromeda's walking over. I don't see any ports happening just yet. Are they going to invulnerable and maybe port in? It doesn't look like it. And there goes the tower kill with uh, pretty much ease there for trademark Esports. So little to no resistance coming out from Frenetic Array. So that'll uh, definitely boost Trademark Esports that much more. You know, a 3,200 gold lead as well as that 4,500 experience lead. How is Pebbles doing? How is good old Pebbles doing in the meantime? He currently has 1,200 gold saved up. He's for 261 gold per minute. So pretty solid game from him all around. Not taking off by any means, but he isn't doing poor at all. So the fact that he is on his way to a portal key, you know, coming up here in the next three or four minutes or so, will be great news here, of course, for the Hellborn team. And we'll see what Pebbles starts to do once he gets that portal key as you would like to see him take off, of course, if you're TDM here. Definitely. I mean, Pebbles, he, he's been pretty quiet this game. You know, BK's just been minding his own business, farming away at the top. And his farm is, isn't, is like you said, he isn't taking off, but still, you know, probably going to be on par for a 14-minute portal key or so, about 1,500 in the bank, 270 GPM. Certainly admirable. Looking at the stats, I believe he's, okay, he's 0-1-1, and so, the, yeah, they did kill him in that... Uh, sort of failed initial push from Keeper of the Forest, so that did slow him down a little bit. But uh, in the mid lane here, we're going to see Electrician in big trouble. The Avalanche followed up by the Arrow will be enough to secure that kill. We saw the power throw come in from afar, but uh, it was not really enough to deter that kill. So alas, Troplandor will fall. Uh, double damage was on Tundra as well, so certainly something else contributing to the ease of that kill for Frenetic Array. But uh, still afraid, a pretty big deficit after losing that tower in the bottom as well. I mean, 3k experience, 2.5k gold is... Uh, yeah, it's pretty significant considering it's all tied up five to five in hero kills. Yeah, it's uh, definitely looking a little bit better for the minus sensing and the experience. Let's see when you have the jungle can definitely be more in your favor just just because of that. But um, no, uh, TM has been playing the better game so far, uh, as you said, despite being tied up five to five hero kills. But that's where things are a little bit dangerous because you know you have there is more than just those basic stats. You have to look at the lineups that we're dealing with, and with the silhouette and Valkyrie. Both having pretty solid games, especially that silhouette, 315 gold per minute now. Um, she will and can be scary. So she continues to come back to this bottom lane, continues to do her thing. Trapador back down here, and we talked about him earlier, and how he's at least in the levels, but his gold farm hasn't really increased all too much. He did finally get that enemy to the exile with the little red booties, but other than that, you know, not sitting on too much else. He's only farming around 152 gold per minute. So he's trying, but 
still uh, still a little bit behind compared to several other heroes in this game. But mm -hmm. keep going back to though Pebbles, who does have enough gold now for a portal key. In fact, you see him purchase it right there. This is that timing now, 15 minutes into the game, just about for TDM, especially with Ratchet who gets tall locked down right here with the avalanche. Can you blink away in time? Yes, you'll be able to. But uh, that was definitely close right there. She got caught by Tundra, but luckily for her, there was no follow-up. But yeah, Pebbles with that portal key, we'll see now uh, how that starts taking out for him. Yep, definitely right. Uh, you know, the, the top lane here, we're going to see that tower get pushed, so Bubble's going to, or Pebble's going to have that portal key in hand to try to make something happen. We're going to see uh, a Valkyrie arrow get chucked here in the mid lane, not going to connect with anything. Uh, that top tier one tower does fall, and it looks like TDM going to continue putting pressure on, just looking for that opportunity in the mid with Talibur going to pick up that kill onto Trautmador. So it looks like Frame might be able to get a tower kill of their own, but uh, at what cost here breaking? It may be one of their tier two towers, unless they get over here and start defending it pretty quick. Z Freak is unrelenting with the pressure down to the bottom. Oh, Silhouette gets taken out from that. Uh, there you go, that Moon Meander uh, B Kid combo, and they do get that tower denied as well. So, that shiny new portal key that Pebbles has coming in handy as the tower does fall here in the top lane. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty huge there for the Hellborn team. Another kill on a silhouette. Now we're third of the game, but yeah, that Wretched Act Pebbles combination, they are going to. They're not going to stop. I mean, <laughs> you look at the season team, it's really four to their five heroes. Very squishy heroes. Tundra being the only one, kind of been a little bit of an exception, but. Uh, Silhouette and Valkyrie especially, I mean, they're going to be very, very vulnerable, let alone Dromeda, who, uh, you know, definitely can expect to feed some kills, who so far is 2 0 2 so it's actually managed to stay alive, but, you know, with that portal key pickup and we're not hack any more farm, it just becomes to a point where, unless you have that shiver up at all places at all times, which really, you know, obviously is impossible, as good as the player Riser is, um, you're going to be getting jumped left and right, but that is a big thing to note at the same time, I know it's kind of laughing a little bit right there, but, Having that shiver will be a big benefit for Frey at the same time. They will, hopefully for their sake, be able to spot some possible incoming ganks from the Porta Key Pebbles and from that level 11 Wretched Hag right now. So you see a position up near the Ancients right here just in case that someone's thinking about flanking from this side. But that, d that does give them a little bit of an advantage against this very aggressive TDM makeup here. Mm hmm no, you're, you're definitely right. Uh, Tundra is going to be a, a very valuable pickup here. And possibly the reason, you know, we commented on uh, Nymphora was on the board and they opted for Luna. You know, maybe there is an argument that Tundra's bird does serve as a pretty good counter to Nymphora. So perhaps that was part of their deterrence and uh, when someone with, with a little more utility. Of course, Luna, as we've mentioned a few times, that global presence really makes her uh, you know, kind of a a particularly strong hero, especially in that support role. We do see B-Kid and Moon, though, lined up. Looks like they may try to make something happen. The blinks uh, all around. Moon actually, look at this little spot. Moon's going to get a little bit of vision here <laughs> up on the high ground and uh, just scout it out. Unfortunately, going to be a few too many heroes for him to pick up an easy kill, so he's just going to head back to friendly territory and continue farming away. Yeah, that was. Uh, looked a little bit interesting, but of course, as you said, having that high ground, you know, dig of the advantage of spotting them, but him not being spotted, was well, at least just scouting out some information, at least. But uh, we'll end up falling back. As Legion Team chasing, though, they're using that shiver in the front lines, and it's going to spot Pebbles over here to the side. And actually, Pebbles will portal key, though, before... Wow, I'm pretty sure that was a swap attempt there from Andromeda, but it ended up being a too bad uh, coming out for him. Or maybe it was a comet stun, but I am not sure if it was a comet. I don't know. Anyways, was <laughs> able to portal key away. That's what matters, and he is going to be fine. But again, that shit, this is what I keep talking about. See it used to go in Invis right there as Pebbles is actually trying to kill it, I believe. Um, so it's going to get away, but it's it's definitely helping, and it's spotting them out, keeping an eye on them, on where they are at all times, and that's giving this Legion team some position opportunity in terms of allowing them to freely farm a silhouette goes back to farming the jungle. By the way, she picked up a portal key herself, so once again we see that portal key pick up hoping that she can get some good advantage here uh, for this Legion team. Yeah, definitely a little bit interesting to see the portal key first. A little bit rare for that. You know, usually it's that null stone rush on Silhouette then straight into portal key. So a little bit of a gamble from Slicks. As you as you noted, uh, that advantage is all going to be as far as initiation. If uh, Silhouette gets initiated on, uh, that Silhouette or <laughs> that portal key is not going to do a hell of a lot to keep her alive. So... Uh, a little bit of a risky build, but should be interesting nonetheless. We see uh, a portal key pickup now on Keeper of the Forest. So Z Freak uh, going for a relatively fast portal key of his own. Still sitting on red boots, though does have that astrolabe and mana ring. Uh, Going to go straight for the portal key. Pebbles still pretty low on the mana regen, not going the mana regen route so much here. He does have a mighty blade, so it looks like he'll be moving towards a pretty quick shrunken head as well. It uh, certainly makes a lot of sense against this Legion team. I think the biggest reason why Slicks chose to go Portal Key here is simply because 
of how quickly that Pebbles especially got a portal key for one and two if, because of that shiver it's give again it's giving her plenty of information realizing at least where Pebbles is if not Wretched Hag as well and it will buy her enough time to say all right they're starting to come for me I'm gonna portal key away and quickly port on out of here it gives her some escape me mechanism in terms of being able to get away because yeah Nolson you could argue could be somewhat similar with the stats it provides and the nullifying effect but at the same time this you know this will just allow her to get away a little bit sooner than it was true. If, she, or if she was working on a Nolson, which obviously is uh, that much more expensive. So mm -hmm. I think that may be some logic when it comes down to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, 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 the, in the long run, though, I mean, it obviously does uh, make her a little bit squishier as you look at her life pool right now. So it can be risky for that reason. But yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see how, how much use she actually makes of it here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, by no means is it uh, a bad choice that, that, per usual, it's sort of that timing. And like you said, uh, the squishiness is really what scares me, because if she does get engaged on or does get hit to negate that portal key, um, you know, it's sort of just like she doesn't have that item a little bit in that engage, and it'll be a little bit rough, but uh, we'll see, especially against the pebbles. That's really what makes me nervous, you know, with a null stone, mm -hmm. just those raw stats are great against that gotcha. Uh, with, uh, you know, a hag and a pebbles, and especially now with uh, the Keeper of the Forest with a portal key of his own, uh, I mean, there's even more initiation power, but GDM really has a pretty solid lead set up for themselves, and now that they're able to hold on to it, they're just going to sit back and farm, maintain map control, and kind of do what they do best, so we see Electrician stacking the Ancients down here. Uh, I mean, Sea Freak's done a pretty good job so far pushing those outer towers. Only two outer towers remain for Frenetic Array. Uh, only 21 minutes into this game, so that's uh, definitely good news for TDM. You see an invisible Valkyrie here, going to be wandering around, may try and set something up onto a Luna. Ooh, is she going to go for it? Is WTF going to make it happen? He's thinking <laughs> like about it. He's staring at each other. He, he's eyeing her up. Uh, not, no, not going to do it, I guess. Oh, so Pebbles is there, so. Pebbles comes in and yeah. runs the fun. WTF, if he mans up here, that'd be so epic, but obviously he knows that Pebbles is nearby. Oh, he leaps away there. All right, then. And yeah, he'll be fine, so. No man out mode for WTF. Yeah. Probably would have been suicidal. So yeah, definitely. Probably wouldn't have been the smart play, but uh, would have been interesting nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, other item pickups here. I don't see a hell of a lot since we last talked about it. So it was just a moment ago. But there is Tundra going to pick up a portal key. So uh, already four portal keys in this game. Plenty of initiation and counter initiation on both sides. Let's take a look at the GPM chart. And uh, sort of as we would expect, TDM continuing to further their lead here with that superior map control and Wretched Hag leading the way. A nice step above uh, Slicks on that silhouette. So we may see uh, some Wretched Hag carry action here as Moomiander continues to farm. Yeah, Moomiander is definitely getting up there. I mean, 391 goal per minute, man. So he is. Uh... He is looking very good here for Trademark Esports. Look at this Congre being attempted. Now the Shiver no doubt spotted them. It's just, uh, can Freight get there in time and do they feel confident that they can stop it? They are starting to make their way over. Little does Tundra know though he's standing right on top of a ward of sight. So they definitely know that, uh, TDM does for that matter, that they know that the Legion team is nearby and that the, they somehow know that they're doing Congre, so. Uh, they're going to start falling back here, obviously, and I'm fully committing to it, and Dromedar is kind of pushing up a little bit. We'll see if she goes for an Aurora Scout. In fact, there we go. Unfortunately, not heading all the way, but may have seen Electrician walk right on by there. But back to Congo we go, so they're just going to try to do some chip damage here and hope that uh, it is enough. Now, Keeper of the Force does have a portal key, so keep that in mind. If the Legion team tries to maybe commit to this, uh, in terms of trying to counter in the Congo kill, Keeper the Force could very likely jump in for a counter initiation mm -hmm. and really screw them over. So that could be big for TDM. We'll see if that opportunity does come up. You also see Electrician doing a very good job purging that Shiver whenever he sees it, which of course insta kills it as a result of the damage that it does, the 800 damage that it does to summon unit. So mm -hmm. um, that's also really screwing over Tundra when he does run it over that Electrician. Yeah, and that's a really good thing to point out. You know, Electrician was last picked in this game, so, you know, we talked about Tundra countering Nymphora. Definitely a, a little bit of at least a soft counter there to shut down that bird, uh, minimizing some of Tundra's effectiveness at least. Certainly not all of it, but um, it does help uh, quite a bit. Pebble's getting pretty yeah. close to his shrunken head now. He does have uh, that Warhammer in uh, hand, so just waiting on that recipe of which he is about halfway there. TDM going to group up, though, and just put some pressure on this bottom Tier 2 tower. It doesn't seem like Frey is too concerned about it, at least not at the moment. They may opt for that Glyph, pour it in at the last second, kill your opposition, and deny kind of a play. But uh, so far, not much know. of a response. I don't know how I feel about that Shrunken Head pickup. Or, uh, you think, look at the Legion team. Mm -hmm. And first off, 
Well, Silhouette and Valkyrie, you know, a lot of physical. Valkyrie, a little bit more magical early on, but she becomes more physical. Um, Trunken Head is still great, you know, purpose of being able to move around. But even so, both Tantra and, and Andromeda both have superior magic ultimates in the Avalanche and the, uh, and the Swap. So the Drunken Head in that sense won't necessarily, you know, be too helpful against all that. You know, it definitely will help against Magmus and... I just, I, I guess where I'm getting at is I kind of wonder if a Soul's Bulwark investment may have been better off here, especially with all the physical damage that you're going to eventually end up dealing with, and let alone already, for that matter. So, mm -hmm. um, but in the end, you know, she's going to go with the Shrunken Head, which you'll have soon here. Um, so we'll see how much of an impact that actually is going to have for Beacon on Pebbles. They are going to attempt Congra once again, but lead to two. Five second arrow hands on Keeper, but obviously uh, <laughs> more for scouting purposes than anything. This is going to be pretty close right here. Legion team and very aware. They got the portal key Tundra. It's just when will be the right opportunity to go in. You see him sending in the courier right here. Going to get some information. No center jumping in. The Avalanche on the key for the force. He explodes into the air. A great bat blast to counter her. On top of Silhouette and Valkyrie. The locked up the Valkyrie. Now she goes. Silhouette will also be picked off more than likely. As she is running away. Magnus comes in with the eruption. Zero damage basically coming out from Leon Black. Unfortunately, just not the greatest position for him. He's going to try to trick away. Wow, nice move there by Leon Black actually. Going the other direction. It's a stun up in three seconds. It's going to be close. It's stun away. Oh, he avoids the last hit, but the haunt on him will take him down. And down he goes. Double tap for Moon Meander. And now they're going to go finish off Condor here. Yeah, very well done by TDM. We see actually uh, Zeepreak never even used his root there. So still a couple of abilities um, you know, off cooldown that could have been utilized in that fight to make it even more convincing. TDM really with a nice defense. Like you said, that Magmus ulti really not connecting with a hell of a lot. Um, really kind of, uh, well, it didn't help things, I guess, at that point. So Congo going to go down relatively early here. The token going to fall into the hands of Moon Meander, who has his Null Stone complete and another... 2.8k in the bank, so uh, Moon Meander definitely getting scary here, pulling up that GPM tab once again. Uh, I mean, DDM's really got a hell of a lead at this point. 12k gold, about 11k experience. They're really starting to pull ahead, not only Moon Meander leading the way, but also just as a team, uh, really looking to be in good shape. I mean, even Pebbles and Keeper now sitting around that uh, 330 mark, and... Um, you know, I think we're going to see Pebbles get pretty scary here. You know, you talked about Soul's Bulwark. Now that he has that Truck and Head complete, it uh, looks like he will be moving into the Soul's Bulwark build inevitably to a Demonic Breastplate. So, interesting choices, but uh, seems to be working very nicely for B-Kid. By the way, something to, uh, interesting to know, too, I was just out sort of curiosity, I did a, a game info, and we're actually on a Japanese server. We're, we're playing on a Japanese server here as a result of it being uh, an Australian versus a U.S. West matchup and I don't know if that was the case of TDM agreeing to you know being like alright we'll go ahead and play in a Japanese server you know one game and then U.S. the next or if that's actually <laughs> ESL rules. I think it is the ESL rules actually um, but yeah not too often we actually see even in this matchup actually on a Japanese server usually is all on U.S. West but um, obviously the thing is, a, is now a, it's still in favor of the Legion team believe it or not <laughs> In a, in a frenetic array, or I guess that is okay. So it's in in their favor, uh, but it is very slight. It's very very even actually when you compare the two pings against one another. But still, I thought that was a interesting point to bring up there. Yep. Oh, always interesting to bring server. up when we're on these cross regional uh, kind of things. Yeah. Uh, unfortunate. Uh, one of the problems with international Han is that uh, cross world ping. You just never really get that same. You know, 30 ping kind of LAN effect that you can if you're all sitting in the same place. Oh, Ooh, down to the bottom lane, Beacon does pick up a kill on Metaliba. Kind of unfortunate uh, for Andromeda. Not much you can do against uh, Pebbles with the portal key. Uh, we do see the tower, tier 2 tower in the mid lane here, been taken out by TDM. Electrician gonna throw a grip onto a silhouette. Uh, not gonna be much follow up. Arrow gonna get chucked, but will connect with a tree dog instead of a hero. Uh, oh, that tree grapple actually not gonna connect with Electrician either. Both teams sort of grouped up here. It is a 5v4 scenario at the moment, so TDM may try to capitalize, though positioning is not on their side as they're stuck outside the base. As always, difficult to engage off from the low ground going into the base. Probably see TDM just back up here, continue farming, finish up another set of core items, and uh, you know, just look for that opportunity to make something happen before they push in the base. This is uh, that sticky situation that the teams find themselves in all too often when they're ahead by a huge margin around this time in the mid game. Uh, but just can't find that opportunity to move into the base and finish off some racks. So, yeah. See what TDM does here. Of course, they still do have that token, Moon Meander, with an eye as well, and now 4,400 gold saved up. Oh, yeah, he is uh, 
Save up big time. So, are we going to see the Hellflower, that straight up Hellflower purchase, or uh, something else here for good old Moon Meander he's on gonna, the Wretched Hang? He's probably just saving up so we can right click that Hellflower just because you said it bugs you the other day. <laughs> just because. That's just, that's so Moon Meander. Just how he does. So Moon Meander. Uh, wouldn't be surprised All to see that uh, right click, though. Oh, there it is. Um, is it? Okay, there you go. Gonna right click that Hellflower. So there you go. That will be damn useful. So that is great news here for um, our Hellborn team in Trademark East for us. That the Wretched Hag, who has been having a very dominating performance all throughout this game, is now that much bigger here for their team. Silhouette still doing her thing. 338 gold per minute. It does uh, slowly but surely go up here. So obviously not the most maximizing damage potential with her items, but kind of forced to go for her. Uh, shrunken head because of the team that she's going against and how it's been playing out already. Uh, but Frenetic Array really in that mindset, which is kind of rare for them to be in in the first place, but they, they're they forced to because of how this game is going of we have to turtle, we have to play very defensive here, and we have to just sit back and then allow Silhouette to get that farm up if we want to have a chance of winning this game. So that's kind of what they're doing here. You look at the vision on the map too for that matter. I mean, look at all the offensive wards that are placed here by Trademark Esports, and right now I don't see any wards actually up by Fnatic Ray other than, okay, there's one way up here at the top lane. Um, but other than that, there there's none up here for Fnatic Ray. So again, maybe a case of just a lot of counter warding going on, but um, not much vision on the map here for our Legion team at this point. Certainly not, and I, I mean, I think that's really reflecting in the difference between uh, team farms here per usual, and that's the case. You know, Frey really has to turtle up, and that opens this window for TDM to just get the better of the map farm. And uh, the longer this static farm fest goes on, sort of the further ahead they're getting here. And, um, you know, B-Kid going to walk straight in. I thought that was an illusion at first because he's so green and he is going to get that combo off to the Shrunken Head. Moon Meander going to use the Bat Blast to pick up a kill onto Leon Black. And it looks like TDM just going to continue pushing forward here. The Shrunken Head going to be used on Electrician as he's way in the front lines. I don't know where the rest of his team is. There's Hag with an Invisibility Rune on. And uh, they're going to make this happen if they're Electrician. He's going to get Avalanche, and he's going to fall. Pebble's going to be in big trouble. A swap onto Silhouette from Andromeda. Silhouette will fall, but I think Wretched Hag going to fall as well. The token going to be burned, though, of course. The root from Keeper of the Forest coming in. There's another stun from Pebbles before he gets out of there, and that will help set up the kill onto Riser. TDM looking very promising here, and uh, only, only one left alive is Valkyrie. So very, very well done. Despite Electrician going down, this uh, could be Rack City here, Breaky. I don't think there's much in the way of buybacks. Only Leon Black on that yeah. Magnus, and he uh, is just going to go ahead and respawn. At the very least, this Tier 3 tower is going to take a good bit of damage. Yeah, it's, uh, ooh, 5 second on Keeper, but again, just stalling a little bit of damage, and that actually may save the tower in the end. No, it is still going to fall here, and that'll be a tower kill for Trademark Esports. So that was definitely a little bit uh, out of a fight with... That was taking place at Wretched Hag. She actually opened and then she used her invis room that she had bottled up and she was just standing there behind Silhouette for a good five, six seconds or so waiting for her team to kind of reposition themselves mm -hmm. and eventually jump back in. Then we saw B Kid kind of reset, so I'm sure that's what they're waiting for for his combo to be up as well as his portal key. And sure enough, right as it was, Wretched Hag opened and uh, we saw him really do a lot of work to Silhouette right there. And, and most of that she was spending playing defensively. She did get swapped by Andromeda, but. It just really delayed the inevitable. So, yeah, overall, though, very, very good positioning from Trademark Esports and very well fought on their part. So, Moon Meander level 18 now. That is three levels higher than anyone on the Legion side. Wow. Already another 2,500 gold saved up. So, Wretched Hag really getting to that point of just being so dominant in this game, if she hasn't been already. 8, 1, and 4 hero kill score is uh, fantastic news here for Trademark Esports and a big reason why they are in such a good spot right now. But, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I keep looking back at the silhouette. She's 2-5-1, but she's still farming. 322 gold per minute, you know, not too bad. And it's not being too overwhelmed just yet. They still got all their racks up, of course. Uh, they still got at least two of their base towers up, now 33 to 34 minutes into the game. So if they can hold it off, really, you know, another 10 minutes or so, I feel like Frenetic Array could definitely start making a comeback. But... It's a big if, I guess. No, you're right. It's There still is a chance, but it's getting close to that point where, uh, you know, it, it's going to be really hard to turn this around. We're going to see Tropador kind of man up down here, and he is way in the front lines. The rest of his team isn't quite in a position to help follow up. Uh, Hag as well as Pebble's going to be here. Pebble's actually going to get caught by a three-second stun. Tropador going to go straight in with that shrunken head activated, and we're going to see Tundra go in as well. 
This fight's ending up uh, pretty chaotic over here. Oh man, still uh, only one kill to come out, and there it is. Mumiere gonna pick up that kill onto Riser, and uh, we do see Keeper in the Force making it to the fight. Can be able to get that root off. Valkyrie barely gonna able to survive, and oh, the oh. Bat Blast gonna miss after a nice line stun from Magmus, but he is gonna fall. So can TDM gonna come out way ahead in this fight after a really kind of a chaotic engage. Yeah, no, it was actually pretty difficult to uh, <laughs> just to see what was going on over on that fight. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it was completely spread out, but in fact, there you go. It looks like Frenetic has had enough. They realize uh, the lead is just getting too big here for Trademark Esports, and that's how it's going to finish. So Trademark Esports, hell of a job there, uh, especially with that final fight as chaotic as it was. They did come out three heroes close to nothing, and it did pretty much frame the spot of, well, we're going to have to move on to game number two. So TDM, one game to nothing now over Frenetic Ray here in the ESL Major Series Grand Final matchup. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Um, you no know, TDM just looking overall pretty solid. It seems the Nerf on Keeper of the Forest, um, I don't want to say insignificant, but didn't really seem to slow Z-Freak down a hell of a lot. So, like you said, moving on to game number two. Sit tight, guys. Of course, I'm Zayori. With me is Breaky CPK back on the Honcast channel now. Thank you so much for joining us for the ESL Finals. And uh, we will be right back. <laughs> 